Hello everybody, my name is Jimmy Smith and welcome to another Wine with Jimmy YouTube channel session on this one is on the port region and this is the Douro Valley and we're looking at part one. This is the first of three parts on port and this is on the vineyard. So those natural factors mainly in the vineyard. Um, so we'll be looking here about the location. We'll be talking about climate and weather and we'll be talking about some of the human influences as well in terms of the vineyard land. Um, there'll be an included working written question at the end of this as normal, which will therefore be there to de designed to sort of help you understand how questions may be formed by WSCT and how you can go about answering them. Um, so really useful session and to reiterate for those of you um, preparing for your WSCT examination, you will get a written question on fortified wine and sparkling 25 marks. So this is mightily important for your revision and your study. Um, so I am Jimmy Smith from at Wine with Jimmy. That's Wine with Jimmy on the YouTube plus the website. Please take a look. We're on social media as well with Twitter, Instagram and Facebook. Um, I own two wine schools in London, West London Wine School and South London Wine School. They're at the bottom of the page, plus a wine bar, two in Streatham. So there we have a rather spectacular picture of the Douro Valley, um, which is just out of this world, quite classic. Uh, as um, you will see, I mean, it's it's pretty hard to go wrong with marketing in terms of the Douro Valley. It's a spectacular landscape with wonderful steep uh, steep um, sides of slopes that go down to the river. This wonderful river which starts its life off in Spain and empties into the Atlantic uh, just after going through northern Portugal. Um, so this is our location we're looking at. Uh, so here's just an overview slide. Um, we are just focusing here on the Douro Valley in terms of this one. We won't be going to Orporto or Villanova de Gaia, which is at the end of the river as it empties into the Atlantic. Uh, so that is uh, where we actually find port being matured. We're talking about the vineyards only in this section. So the natural and human factors that affect the vineyard. It's that red area there in North and north uh, eastern Portugal, so the Douro Valley. It is therefore on the river Douro, which is called the Duero in Spain. Um, it's uh, one of the longest rivers in the Iberian Peninsula, I think just behind the Tagus, uh, so a very long river. And it starts its life off in the Sistema Ribérica, which is um, just to sort of the northeast of uh, Ribera del Duero. Uh, it kind of starts to head um, south uh, east to begin with before curtling round and then coming through areas that you know very well. So places like Ribera del Duero, um, places like uh, Rueda, just north of Segovia, uh, just south of Valladolid, and then starts to head through Toro, um, Salamanca, and then it heads into northern Portugal, uh, the Douro Valley, and then finally the Vino Verde region and Oporto. So that's our location there. Let's have a little bit of a closer look at this area. So here's quite uh, an interesting map that identifies the rainfall, the precipitation of the region. Um, and this is during the growth season. So all of these colors here are during the growth season. So you'll see there are lots of nice greens and even a little bit of blue on the far uh, western side, right next to the Serra do Maral. Uh, and that is where we find rainfall levels at somewhere around sort of 400 to 600 millimeters per growth season. And then it goes green and yellowy, that's around sort of three to 400. And then finally to the reds on the uh, eastern side, which is around sort of um, well, about 200-ish um, millimeters per year. So you clearly see that this quite large region stretching from its westerly point near the Serra de Maral, and then its border, its eastern point of Spain, um, does range, uh, does drop dramatically as it goes um, upstream, up the Douro River, uh, in terms of rainfall as it heads away from the Atlantic. So rainfall here is actually quite spread out and it is quite um, quite different depending on where you are. Um, so what, do we, what else do we need to know? We need to know the macro climate of the region, the kind of broad climate of the area. Um, so broadly we are talking that this is a warm continental climate, but certainly in areas near the Serra de Maral on this uh, western side, you will have maritime influences. 
um, uh, you know, that will come through naturally uh, due to its location becoming closer to the Atlantic. Um, but that big mountain range there is important. The Serra de Maral, this mountain range that I have added in here on this picture, is the mountain range that protects this region that lies to the east from the westerly winds, which may be wet weather, cool weather. Um, so this region wouldn't probably uh, exist in the might it does today if those mountains weren't there. It would be a region quite similar to the Vino Verde area, so the Minyao sort of zone where you find very light, fresh whites generally. Um, so that probably would be the similarity here. But because there's this protection of the mountain range, you get drier conditions and warmer conditions building up here. And as a result, of course, you have the real great capability of ripening the port grape varieties, uh, the, um, which there are many, but you will need to be able to recognize five of those. Um, it is then split into zones. There are three subzones, and you can see that they are clearly identified here. I think I might underline these for you and talk about these. Um, so we'll find here we have the Bakshakurgo, uh, and you'll see that this is the area around Regua. Uh, so Regua is in the central area, beautiful city. And this is mainly sort of green with a bit of blue, bit of yellow. So the rainfall here is sort of 300 to 600 millimeters per growth season per year. Uh, so this is the wettest, um, it's the coolest. And normally they would say some of the lightest wines are made here. Some of the most elegant and acidic and lightest wines would be produced in the Baxacorgo. Then there is this kind of middle zone around Pinau. So I'll do this in this kind of, um, let's do it in a, in a light yellow color. Let's underline this one just here. So the Sima Corgo. So the central Corgo area, um, this one uh, is uh, around Pinau. So you see the city of Pinau here, quite famous uh, location. And um, we are talking about this having kind of the most balanced climate. So good rainfall, but not too much. Uh, and good warmth behind it as well, but not too intensive. Um, vines will do quite well here. They will struggle as they need to, but um, they do quite well. So this is in fact, has the highest percentage of top uh, vineyards, which are used for the production of port are located in the Sima Corgo. And then there's this black line here that separates it from the Duro Superior. And Duro Superior rather is the hottest and the driest as one would expect. Um, it's quite sparsely planted in fact, uh, but obviously along the Douro River the mostly, um, but it is sparsely planted, but very high quality grapes are produced here as well. But it is dramatically dry as you can see from the numbers, we're talking somewhere around sort of two to 400 millimeters of rain per year uh, with um, the real sort of drier areas going far to the east and along the Douro Valley itself as you head to Barça d'Arva. So that is your main part of this landscape. Um, what about weather problems here? So we've talked about the sunshine, the warmth here, and the, the disparate, or the rather the differences of rainfall of this area. Oh, and as I'm a perfectionist, I'm just gonna have to draw a line here because I didn't do one under the Douro Superior. So, so that area being the driest and the hottest of the zones. So problems we find here. Really, I think we can say quite clearly that there are three distinctive problems within the Douro Valley zone. Um, it is continental, uh, so it will have potentially the issues of spring frosts that we find here. So spring frosts can um, damage and destroy um, buds. Um, it doesn't tend to be the biggest of issues, but you will tend, you can find it happening. Um, then this rain, this area is subject to quite intensive Atlantic rainfalls from time to time, certainly in summer. Um, and if it is early summer, if there's heavy downpours that can disrupt flowering, which reduces yields. And if there's heavy downpours, of course, towards the end of the season, that is going towards harvest, that can cause issues with the quality of the grapes, um, dilution, etc. Um, so rainfall with the heavy kind of almost uh, um, storm-like rainfalls and downpours can be a bit of an issue. Um, but really, if you head towards the Simar Corgo and the Douro Superior, these two areas um, can have certainly quite distinctive problems with lack of rainfall, lack of water availability during summer. So therefore summer drought. Uh, and uh, this can be an issue. One very good thing though with this area is the soil. The soil is a metamorphic soil called schist. And this schist fractures very easily as a, as a rock, as a bedrock, and um, 
that's quite loose as a topsoil. So the root systems can actually find themselves quite easily to go through this, uh, this rock because it's fractured quite easily. Uh, and then it can get down to the water supplies, which are normally stored through the winter months. Um, so the soil enables the vine's root systems to um, really dig deep and find that water, which is essential for their survival during the summer drought conditions. OK, so I think we've done everything on that slide for now. Now we're going to see some very pretty pictures uh, because along this river and you'll see the Duro River is running all the way. Um, let's uh, let's go here is all the way um, from here. So it comes in from Spain at this point uh, and then heads um, from Portino up here towards Pinal and then Regua as it then heads uh, then into the Mino zone as it heads towards Oporto. Um, so we're going to actually look at some pictures here because there are some quite classic vine systems and that's rather say um, uh, vine training systems due to the landscape. It's a dramatic landscape with quite different gradients of slopes. They can be quite gentle and all the way up to quite extreme. So there are different, basically different types of viticultural systems in play here uh, to adapt to those different gradients. So the first and the most traditional and most classic is the socalcos. Uh, so the socalcos systems um, are what you see here. So these are um, these walled terraces, which it's impossible to get any kind of mechanized uh, sort of machines up here and tractors and you know all these kind of harvesters and leaf um, pruners and all those kind of things it's very very tough so therefore this is very very limited mechanization on these wonderful terraces because the slopes are quite steep in gradient this one looks probably at around 40 uh, 40 degree um, gradient so they've built these terraces. These terraces um, often have to be maintained. They're expensive because if heavy rainfall does occur, and it really does, um, they can often uh, unloosen the stones here. And you can get sometimes some collapsing of these stone wall support terraces. So you'll often see masoners in work, uh, putting them back together, hammering them back in due to those rainfall. So this is the Socalcos system. Uh, which is um, quite traditional. Then we have what's called the patamares, which are more of a modern invention. Um, often they follow the contours of the land, as you'll see here. These are newly planted vines here. You can see the upheaval of the soil and then the protection of the new vines uh, with their little plastic um, containers around them at the base. Um, but this gives you an idea of what it looks like. Uh, so patamares, um, then are, are that new style of terrace. There are no retaining walls, um, but you'll see it's a bit more of a gentle gradient, this one. This is probably at something like 25 degree gradient. Um, and they are um, really uh, produced um, for giving access to the tractors and mechanization. So you can actually see that there are um, like little little paths, little um, dirt paths behind the rows of vines, which enable some mechanization in those areas. So that is the patamares. And our um, last one is on generally, I mean, this actually looks about the same gradient, but generally this is the, um, the least gradient area. And this is Vino al Alto. Uh, and these are where you'll see the, um, the rows of vines commonly will go from the north to the south part of the vineyard, so from the highest peak part down towards the southern part, as you can see in this picture, quite wonderful. This is Taylor's flag gate. Uh, so you'll see that wonderful sweeping way. It's quite a normal vineyard, really, um, that we'll find in other parts of the world, but it is um, still taking advantage of the slope. Uh, so that is Vina Al Alto, and um, I'm guessing on most of the Vina Al Altos, you'll be able to have mechanization as well if the slope is not too extreme, as they generally are found, found on flatter landscapes. So the three types of um, sort of training systems in play there, Socalcos, Patamares, and Vina Al Alto. Um, now let's have a quick look at a video, which once again, I haven't really... Uh, I haven't uh, got, so you'll have to bear with me because I haven't prepared this bit as well as I probably should do. Uh, but let's have a look at this video. I just need to pop it into the system. Uh, here we go. 
Um, oh, uh, there we go. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I just need the code. Oh, that's not giving me the code. Uh, <laughs> okay, I've got it. I've got it. Fear not, ladies and gentlemen, fear not. Okay, so here we are. Voila. So we're going to show you a video, and uh, I'm probably going to, to jump around a little bit here because it begins this video off with um, actually at the coast, uh, and I and we're doing that on a future video. So there is the Iberian Peninsula. We're going to be heading, of course, to the north, but we are, first of all, as you can see, heading to Oporto, which will be covered in a future video. So let me um, skip ahead from here. Uh, that is still Oporto, but here we go. So now we're going to look at places like um, places like Pinal, Rejua, etc. But we're going to get an idea, just a bit of a quick video here for about a minute to get a feeling of the Douro Valley and how it looks in terms of Google Earth. And here you'll see um, there is some Patamares. There's a little bit of Vina al Alto in the foreground there as well. That's a bit of a combination. Um, I don't see any Socarcos, and there might have been a little bit right down by the river here, but you get an idea of the landscape here. Dramatic, steep, and lots of different vine training systems in place in this wonderful, wonderful landscape. Um, I think there's there's some Socalcos right down there at the bottom. So you've got all of them here, Socalcos, Patamares, and a little bit of Vina al Alto in this middle area here. Um, so that is the dramatic landscape of the Duro Valley, um, but please, in your own time, take a look at um, uh, take a look a little bit at online. You know, search on Google and on other search engines, and you'll get a real great idea for the beauty of the Duro Valley, one of the first demarcated regions in the world. Um, great varieties. Now, WSET have really sort of um, sort of reined in what you need to know about the great varieties. You need to be able to recognise these five grape varieties that are used in port. There are many more, but it's these five, and they're really just focusing on red port for the WSET level three. They won't go into the rosé or the white. So here are your varieties, Toriga Nacional, generally quite small berries, quite thick skinned, producing quite powerful wines and powerful ports. Tinto Roritz, uh, is your Tempranillo. Good idea to understand that and know that. That's found in questions before. Tempranillo in Spain, Tintororitz in the Douro Valley in northern Portugal, producing often quite a bit of elegance and acidity into the blend. Torriga Franca and Tinta Cao, often adding quite good intensity and aromatics. And Tinta Barroca, often being a brighter, fresher, lighter style. You do not need to know anything specifically about these. You need to be able to recognize them. They may give you a multiple choice question, for instance, and say which of the following is, is used in port, or they might say which of the following isn't used in port, and then you have to pick the correct answer, of course. So I'm not going to dwell on that too much, as you don't need to know, uh, obviously, too much about that. Okay, so that is, um, that is really uh, the, our first section done for the theory. Uh, we will look at the, um, the, the winemaking side of it, and then the styles on parts two and three of port, which will come in the future, and you can find the links to those uh, in the um, in the in the description below this video. But now for the partial partial written question. Now we've done many many questions on these understanding video series uh, centered around things like labels, but they can and they will give you um, these questions which are map based. So for your cartographers and geographers in the groups, then absolutely fine for you. But those of you that aren't naturals when it comes to map making and map understanding, you might need to spend a bit of time locating these maps. What I find is very useful is um, absolutely drawing these, uh, these maps out, each of the districts and regions and so on in great detail with lots of colorful um, uh, barrel pens and Sharpie pens. Uh, and annotating them um, on A3 pieces of paper. That's how I do it. But here we go, here's a question. So please identify, so this is a very simple identification exercise. Identify the three regions from the map. So these are the sub-regions of the Douro Valley, one, two, and three. So of course we have on the most wettest and coolest part, uh, just in the shadows of the Serra do Maral, you have the Bakshokorgo region. 
The next one, Longwitz, has that high concentration of top vineyards is the Simar Corgo. Uh, and then the one in the real continental part, it is the Duro Superior, which borders Spain. Uh, so that's your three areas for three marks. Nice and easy. Uh, but identifying, you may get questions like this. In which subzone is the highest concentration of the top vineyards for one mark? That is your second area, which is the Simar Corgo. Around places like Pinal, for instance, it is the most balanced of the climatic areas in, due to the weather conditions in play. What is the general climate of the and weather of the Douro Valley? So this is the macro climate of the whole area. Um, it is broadly a warm continental climate. So please, 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 when you answer questions around this, um, please make sure you put the general climate, this is continental, and then the warmth of it. The could be cool, could be moderate, warm or hot. So this is warm continental, protected uh, from the cold and rainy winds of the Atlantic by the Serra de Maral. Uh, you could mention that rainfall, because you now know the numbers, stretches from a a few hundred millimeters in the Duro Superior to up to around sort of 600, 700, 800 millimeters in the uh, back Socorgo, if you wish. But this answer here would get you the marks quite nicely. Okay. Um, then we have uh, which of the subzones is the coolest and wettest? Of course, that's the back Socorgo. That is the closest to the Atlantic and therefore naturally going to have the lowest amount of rainfall and cooler conditions. Please state three weather hazards in the Douro Valley uh, that it experiences and the effect it has on the vines. Uh, so heavy downpours that can disrupt flowering and cause problems at harvest. Okay, we talked about that earlier. So um, the uh, disruption at flowering. So as the as the flowers are just coming out, if it starts to rain too heavily, you get problems with millerandange. Uh, and that is where um, you will find that due to the very inclement wet weather, um, the seeds don't form too well in the berries uh, and they're a bit stunted due to the effect of the rain during flowering. Uh, so that is poor flower flowering and therefore poor fruit set eventually as well. Um, grape growers will have an idea really of the yield after this point, after flowering, how successful flowering was. Summer droughts can stress the vine, of course, leading to a decrease in sugar accumulation. As a vine is put through too much stress, and as I'm speaking today, it's 37 degrees Celsius in London. It's very, very hot. Um, when it's so hot, the vine will not be accumulating sugar. It will not be um, sort of going along nicely and producing good sugar levels. It actually then starts to go into survival mode and starts to search for water and nutrient and minerals so it can actually survive these very harsh conditions. It's exactly like us. As soon as it gets rather hot, we need nice large glasses of ice cold water to refresh us, to really keep us, keep us going. Uh, so summer droughts, stressing the vine. And the last one will be around spring frosts. These can damage or destroy buds, uh, thus decreasing yields, which is really linking back um, to your viticultural parts and chapters of your book. So that is it for our first section on port, which is all about the vineyards. Our second section will be on the winemaking side of things, and the third section will be on the styles of port. So thank you so much for your time and attention. Always very interested in comments or questions. Uh, and please pop them in the YouTube description, um, uh, sorry, the, the channel, um, what do you call it, um, comments section of the video, or get in touch please with things like Instagram, Twitter, um, or you can get in touch with us at uh, our websites as well through the contact page. So at Wine with Jimmy, West London Wine, which is uh, my wine bar in Fulham in London, South London in Streatham, London, and then my wine bar in Streatham, Streatham Wine House as well. So next time you're in London, please come and see us for a class, a glass, or a bottle. Thank you so much. See you soon.